So last night, I had a dream about some of the hottest Pokemon. And actually, hold up. Just to be clear, by hot, I mean like temperature-wise hot. You know, like fire Pokemon. Sorry guys, no furry business here. With some of the best Pokemon around being fire types, I'm ready to burn the Paldea region to the ground with a fire only Pokemon team. Move over Mela, you and your turtle aren't worthy of the fire star badge. Also to make this somewhat of a challenge, I'll be doing a hardcore Nuzlocke with the rules on screen now. By the way, I'm curious. Let me know in the comments who you think is the best fire Pokemon of all time. We leave our bedroom and head down the stairs to be greeted by our uh, um, pet squirrel? Okay. Cavill, the director of the academy, then comes over, and I'm pretty sure he has a thing for my mum as he's giving her gifts, but the guy's gonna give me a Pokemon, so I'm gonna let that slide for now. He tosses out three Pokemon, and we all know what happens next. Fukoko burns an orange to a crisp and then jumps on my shoulder. All right, let me introduce you to our neighbor, Nimona. She's already a champion and wants to take me on. As a champion, she'll surely grab the Quaxley and put an end to my run, right? Oh, she, she grabbed the grass cat. Well, thank you. Now, before I can truly conquer the Paldao region, I'll need some recruits. Perfect, it's a Houndoom. This is exactly the firepower I needed to... Hey, wait, well, what are you doing? Put me down, you moron, I want that Pokemon. <sighs> we may have missed out on the Houndoom, but I still need some allies. So we go on a hunt and we kind of just kidnap a Fletching from its family. Am I really prepared to go this far just to accomplish my goal? Stealing Pokemon from their families. How am I any better than the likes of Giovanni and Team Rocket? I mean, this bird isn't even a fire type anyway. I can't even use it right now. Do I really need to do this? Oh, look at the time. I'm late for school. Gotta go. So now that we've settled in school, let me quickly explain the level caps. Unlike other games, we have 18 badges to collect and all of them have their own level caps. First up is Namona and she wants us to take out the eight gym badges and eventually become a champion ranked trainer. And then we have Avon, who needs some help collecting some special, um, herbs? Yeah, okay. Which are guarded by five Titan Pokemon. And finally, we have Cassiopeia, who wants us to clear the five Team Star bases and defeat their bosses. We set our sights in the first gym, but before I decide to exterminate Katie and her bugs, I go off the beaten path and we run into a Capsa Kid. This little green chicken is a pure grass type for now, so we'll need to chill with Mockingbird for the time being. Now it's time to burn some bugs. After beating Katie and her bugs, Zuko the sick monster seems to have been so excited with all the bloodshed that he had caused that he evolves into a Crocola. And I'm just gonna say this, this is the best second evolution out of all the starters. After literally burning her gym to the ground, Katie was still nice enough to take a photo together and give us the gym badge. Next up, we have the Stone Titan to take care of, and if you haven't noticed, our team is not built to take on a giant rock crab. Although we do pick up a Char Cadet along the way, taking on the Titan will only lead to death and misery. But there is a way. We travel through the harsh deserts, even popping in to say hello to the Titan. We then go through Artisan City while ignoring the grass gym. Don't worry, I'll be back for you. Then we jump across the river. Um, let's try that again. Right, uh, excuse me for a second. And now we can get the item to save the run. With this stone, we can evolve Katy Perry, and now we can return to our friend, the Stony Cliff Titan. This giant rock crab stands no chance against Katy Perry, who can terrestrialize and completely destroy it. Although Katy Perry's bloodlust hasn't ended here. After collecting a bunch of floors running at about one frame per second, we head straight to the next gym. Um, Brassius, uh, I'm not gonna lie, you're kinda creeping me out, mate. Katy Perry, please destroy this gym. Thank you, Katie. Next on the agenda is the Open Sky Titan. But to be honest, I'm not feeling confident taking out this giant bird with our current team. Heading to the mines, we come across a family of Roly Coley. Look, 
I know it looks bad that I always have to kidnap baby Pokemon from their families, but how else am I supposed to take out that bird? Wait, level 23? Okay, looks like you're safe for now, buddy. Time for plan B. Back at area two of the South Providence, we go to the fields and we find ourselves a lonely Eevee. We adopt this poor Pokemon and then we waste no time evolving it into a Flareon. We then head up the mountain, dodging as many boulders as possible before we can take on the Sky Titan. And this stupid bird was a bigger threat than expected. I lead with Phoenix and we can get off two baby doll eyes, halving the Bombarder's attack stat. Zuko can tag in and he takes a super effective rock throw surprisingly well on the switch. We then terrestrialize with Zuko and we can 1v1 the bird using incinerates. Although we did risk a crit at the end, we still get the win. The 2v1 fight with Arvin was actually easier as Nackley was taking hits for us while doing good damage. After beating the Titan, we grab the herbs with Avon and I get him to make us a sandwich. But of course, the thing I care most about here is that he's helping his poor Mabostiff. Okay, time for a quick story recap. Avon wants us to defend Defeat the Titan Pokemon as they have special herbs that can help Mabostiff. Once we give the dog all five herbs, he should be as good as new. Also, we can ride on water now, so that's cool. Now it's finally time to take out some Team Star bosses, starting with Giacomo, the Dark user. And to be fair to this guy, he did make the Team Star theme, which is a banger tune. Yeah, um, is uh, was this disguise actually meant to fool anyone? We storm the base and we start plowing through our way through the grunts and their Pokemon. Eventually the boss has seen enough and Giacomo comes out to face us. Katy Perry flamethrowers this tiny pornard into smithereens, taking it out in a single hit. The Star Mobile is next. Yeah, we fight the car. And I can slowly take it out by switching in everyone to chip away at it before the terrestrialized Zuko can come in and land the finishing blow. After making the first dent towards Team Star, it's time to continue our path as champion by taking on the next gym. As we make our way there, we come across a glowing Growlithe and this fire dog also has a unique ground type terraform, adding some diversity to the team. Growlithe barely gets a chance to breathe as I evolve him straight into a powerhouse Arcanine. Then Hot Dog is thrown straight into the action in a fight against Nimona. Both her rock ruff and Paul we can do nothing as Hot Dog can take them out with digs. Terrestrialize Florigato also stands no chance as Hot Dog can flamethrow it straight back to Nimona. Next is Iono, the electric gym leader. And once again, this is the Hot Dog show. He can take out Iona's whole team with flamethrowers and digs one by one. The timing of this encounter was actually perfect. Iona also wants to take a selfie with us, which we allow, and we also grab another gym badge. Yeah, I, I'm sure you're a student, buddy. About 50 years ago, that is. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's finally time. Mela, you Pokemon rookie, I'm coming for you. Um, actually, let me just track back and catch that car call quickly. Perfect. Get out of my way, Clive. This one's personal. I bust open the gates to the base and I show no mercy to all the lackeys and their Pokemon as we storm through. Mela then does come out on a Starmobile and finally I can take her out. And to be honest, this battle was actually kind of underwhelming. My underleveled Thomas completely wars their team and I felt like I built this up to be some epic clash when it was in fact just one of the easiest fights in the game. Turns out having a decent rock fire type is all you need to take on Mela. You know what Haunted, you're kinda useless in this form. Let's fix that for you bud. Can we all please take a moment to appreciate just how cool this evolution looks? Avon's my boss stuff is back in my mind and we happen to be close to the lurking steel titan so I decide to head that way. Sorry earthworm, but you're between me and getting my boss stuff healthy so I didn't have a choice. Avon's Pokemon is getting healthier and now we can jump higher so that's kind of a win-win. Next up we have the water gym to take on and well you'd think I'd be worried right? Enter Katy Perry. Oh wait, you want me to return Kofu's wallet first? Lady, you're really ruining the rhythm of this video, you know that? Okay, done. And now finally, Kofu time. As I was saying, Katy Perry can terrestrialize into a pure grass type and can just solo this gym by bullet seeding her way through. And with that win, we have now completed gym number four. Great, it's Director Cavill. Listen bud, you ain't fooling anyone with that disguise. Well, maybe Cassiopeia for some reason, and every other student in Team Star as well apparently. In fact, maybe this is actually a good disguise after all. Regardless, when we see Clive, that means that there's a Team Star base nearby that needs to be shut down. 
I bust the door down and we start beating up Team Star's poison Pokemon until the main guy Atticus comes out to join the beating. Hot Dog has been feeling neglected, so I let him off his leash, easily one-shotting the Skun Tank, Weather Room, and finally the Muck with Terrestrialized Digs. The Starmobile does put up a better fight, but it's nothing Hot Dog can't handle. That's another base taken care of, and we're making some serious progress right now. After spending some quality time with my Pokemon, I get some big evolutions along the way. Thomas becomes a Colossal, Mockingbird becomes a Talonflame, and last, but certainly not least, Zuko evolves into a Skelleridge. Alright, you know what? Let's actually go for a nice meal and spend some time unwinding before we move on. Um, yeah, that's that's right, but no need to yell, bud. Alright, so, so they just scream orders to one another across the restaurant, it seems? Uh, so did we just kill everyone in the dining area? Oh great, this guy's probably a fed coming to lock me up. Uh, scratch that, he's just the gym leader. Normally I would let Haunted take the lead, but I know that we have a Nimona fight straight after and we can't change our team. So I do lead with Hot Dog, only to switch in Haunted straight away. Although we get yawned, there's nothing Larry's poor koala can do to us as its sucker punches keep failing. Because of this, all Haunted has to do is continue to bulk up until it runs out of sucker punch PPs. From here, Haunted gets to work on Larry's team. We start off with a flame charge, getting the kill, but also raising my speed. Do Dunce Bunce jumps into action, only to be brick breaked in the face. Finally, his ace Staraptor swoops in and he makes my life easier as he becomes a pure normal type, letting brick break hit super effective. We defeat Larry, get our fifth gym badge, and finally, we can eat some food. Before we can even breathe, Nimona does challenge us to a fight in front of Greeter, the main champion of the game. Thankfully, Hot Dog and his ground terrestrialization completely wipes the floor with her team. Well, except for her ace, Meowskata. Mockingbird comes in to eat up a quad-resisted flower trick before a couple of acrobatics take out her cat. After going through the scorching deserts, we need to scale the snowy mountains, getting us to Monte Nevera. It sounds like there might be a rap battle going on over at the stage. Okay, I'm curious. Let's check it out. Listen, Rhyme, your reign ends here. You're going to get rung up by this pro cashier. Pro cashier? Well, I'm about to cash out. Must have got your rhymes on deep discount. <laughs> Uh, hold up. What's happened to her eyes? She's just gone full Undertaker here. Now this is the first gym battle where I actually need to put some thought into my plays. She leads with Mimikyu and Burnett while I have Thomas and Hot Dog out. Hot Dog intimidates both her Pokemon, dropping their attack stats. Then I switch out Hot Dog and bring in Mockingbird. Thomas eats a Shadow Sneak from Mimikyu and Burnett fails the Sucker Punch. Thomas then goes for an Earthquake, breaking Mimikyu's disguise and hurting Burnett. We continue this strat until an Acrobatics can take out the Burnett and an Earthquake finishes the Mimikyu. Houndstone and Toxtricity are next to switch in, and although we do get an attack boost from the crowd, cheering us on, Mockingbird will die to an electric move, so Hot Dog comes back in to double intimidate again. We then trade blows until Thomas gets on low health, so I switch in Katy Perry, who takes a massive critical hex. Hot Dog does get a big crunch in the Houndstone, sending it back to its grave. I know, I'm hilarious. And then a final crunch from Hot Dog puts an end to our last Pokemon, Toxtricity. We get a photo together and of course our sixth gym badge. Now you would think that the gym across the road, well technically across the bridge, would be our next stop. But nope, this game makes us head back all the way to the desert to take out a Titan Pokemon. It is from a boss diff, so I actually don't mind. Also, why does this Don fan look like it's come straight out of a Dr. Robotnik's lab from a Sonic game? Although this thing does look tough, Katy Perry is too much for this giant Pokemon and we take it out with Arvin. We grab another special herb and my boss diff is almost fully recovered. Oh, and by the way, we can glide now. I should probably mention that. Great, it's Nimona again. I bet you could use a little warming up before you take on the gym, huh? Actually, I'm fine, but thank you. Oh, we don't actually have a choice. Okay then. Well, let's make this quick, please. Lycanroc, dig. Sligo, Shadow Clawed. Pormont, dig. Meowskata, acrobatics. Thank you for stopping by, Nimona. Time to play some bootleg Just Dance clone. Haunted, no, please don't dab. My goal is to grow strong and build muscles. Any tips? Do I look like the right person to ask for tips on building muscle? Now we need to take out Tilip and her psychic team. Okay, how does she walk in those shoes, by the way? Haunted takes a lead and terrestrializes to lose its ghost weakness and then doubles her attack with a swords dance. 
She gets up one with sword sense, and now she can bring out the broom to sweep. First off, Arafra goes down to a flame charge, which also boosts my speed. Then it's just Shadow Claws all around as Gardevoir, Espartha, the Egyptian Emu, and even her ace, Terrestrialize Flaugers, go down to a single strike. We get Jim Badge number seven, and of course, grab a photo together. Back to the snowy mountains we go, and I've just realized poor Zuko hasn't had much air time in this run. Well, that's about to change real quick. Grusha, the ice gym leader, who I first thought was a girl, if I'm being honest, is holding the last badge we need before we can take on the elite form. Zuko gets out and things get real bad real quick. For Grusha, I mean. Frostmoth goes down to a quarter effective flame charge while also raising my speed. Bear ticked and falls to a terrestrialized torch song, which is the most broken move in the game. 80 base power and will always raise your special attack stat? Okay, what the hell were Game Freak thinking when they made this move? See, Titan the monster actually survives a plus one terrestrialized super effective torch song. Thankfully, we can eat the liquidation from him and we can take it out on the next turn. Now is the ace Altaria that comes out, which is a waste of everyone's time as one more torch song gets the kill. That's all eight badges completed, but we aren't quite ready for the Elite Four just yet. Team Star probably think I've forgotten about them as I haven't been to a base in a while. But unfortunately for them, we storm through the base with our Pokemon and it's not long before Boss Ortega comes out with his stupid smug face. Katy Perry takes out his Azumarill with back-to-back -back seed bombs. Wigglytuff comes in next, so I switch in Haunted, who gets in for free as a body slam doesn't affect me. Haunted that doubles her attack with a sword stance, while Wigglytuff goes for a charm, but that won't affect us as I'm holding the clear amulet. We go for one more sword stance, and we take out the Wigglytuff with a flame charge, raising our speed. Dash Bun is next, and I expect a plus four Shadow Claw to take it out, but this dog eats the hit like a champ. The second Shadow Claw takes it out, but we can't stay in. Zuko switches in against the Starmobile, and this guy is ridiculous. We can 1v1 the Starmobile with Torch Songs and we take out the Fairy Base without any deaths. We get a photo with Otega and there's only one base left. But before we take on the last base, we have the False Dragon Titan Pokemon that needs to be taken care of first. Okay, I'm literally risking my life for this TM. It better be good. Oh, come on. Dondonzo is a False Dragon Titan, but thankfully a terrestrialized Katy Perry is too strong and can take it out. Then the Tatsuguri has a cheeky chomp on the herbs and wants to fight. Once again, Katy Perry is a star here and we defeat the last Titan Pokemon. We get the last herb and grab the final photo with Arvin. Team Star's fighting type base is now my final task before we can get to the end game. Wait, hold on. I almost forgot something. This also happened. We approach the final base and smash through all the Pokemon thrown in front of us. After a short time, Eerie has seen enough and comes out. Mockingbird goes for a sword stance, doubling the attack stat. Toxicroak then hits us with a poison jab and of course gets the poison on its first hit. But I came prepared and I recovered with a berry. And now the slaughter begins. First Toxicroak goes down to an Acrobatics. Passman then hops in only to fall to an Acrobatics himself. Lucario can also do nothing as a flame charge melts it. Next is Annihilate and this also falls to a single Acrobatics. Her last line of defense is a Starmobile and for this I terrestrialize and I go for a big Acrobatics only for it to survive on a Slither. We take a hit back but then deliver the final blow getting the win. We grab our last photo of the game and now we have all 18 gym badges. It's time for the Elite Four, but before we can take on the trainers, Rika does her best to try and stop us by putting us through an interview. Do you like Pokemon? Whew, that was a close one. It seems that Rika isn't done with us yet as she's the first member we need to take on. Katy Perry terrestrializes and kills a Wish Cash with a Seed Bomb. Camera up switches in, so a hard switch in Thomas who can eat a Fire Blast. Thomas then goes for an Earth Power, but it's just short from the KO. Camerupt then yawns Thomas, meaning I will fall asleep unless I switch out. I keep Thomas in, taking out the Camerupt on the next turn while also falling asleep. Don Fan is next, so I switch in Katy Perry, taking an Earthquake. From here, Katy Perry can bullet seed away through Rika's team, taking out the Don Fan, the Duck Trio, and of course, her terrestrialized Clod Sire, giving us the win. Next in line is the Toddler Poppy. She uses Steel Types and, um, 
well, we all know how this is going to go. Zuko comes in, and one torch song after another, we completely destroy her team. Magnazone throws a spanner in the works as it survives and paralyzes me with a discharge. We still take it out, but I can't keep Zuko in against his Tinkerton. Hot Dog comes in, intimidating her Tinkerton before eating a Stone Edge. One flamethrower later, we take it out, giving us win number two. Businessman Larry walks in, but this time with a flying type team. I let Haunted off the leash as she's keen to get involved, and let's just say this doesn't end well for Larry. Haunted can set up sword stances on Tropius with ease. In fact, Tropius makes it easier by setting up the sun, boosting up my fire moves. Every single one of Larry's Pokemon are one-shotted, giving us a clean sweep. The last test before the champion is Hassel and his dragons. Now I'd love to tell you that this was a harsh test that pushed me and my Pokemon to our limits and beyond. But in reality, Haunted just sets up with Sword Santas and Flame Charges before... Well, just watch. Thanks for the battle hassle. With every member defeated, it is finally time for the champion, Greeter. We head outside and the stage is set for the showdown. I lead with Zuko and well, I hate to do this, but... Okay, well, that, that didn't go to plan. Although Haunted comes in and gets a kill, it was still a bittersweet victory losing my starter. Wait, 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 don't go. The game isn't over just yet. In fact, the best is still yet to come. First, I evolve Nala into a Pyro and add it to the team. Then we go to the lighthouse to take on Avern and he's my boss diff. The plan here is to sweep with Haunted again. Boring. I switch in between Pokemon to get in as many Intimidates off on Greedent using Hot Dog. Flame Body from Mockingbird even gets the burn, making it even easier to set up. Haunted easily sets up, and then from here he just slays through all of his Pokemon without breaking a sweat. We were so close, my boss stiff. So close. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one, buddy. Now we need to take on Director Clavel, and this is where Mockingbird can get some love. Mockingbird sets up with a Sword Sense, while his monkey goes for a yawn, making us drowsy. We go for another Sword Sense, then Oregano goes for a foul play, almost taking me out. Mockingbird falls asleep, but I prepared for that by equipping a Chesto Berry. Oranguru, dead. Houndoom, dead. Abomasnow, dead. Politigest, dead. Amongus, dead. And finally, Quackwevel, dead. With Director Cavill defeated, there's only one last person to beat before I can take on Nimona, and that's Penny. I'm just gonna cut to the chase. This is another Mockingbird sweep by setting up on Umbreon. But I promise, however, that this is the last battle that I'll use setup strats on the first Pokemon and sweep through the game, as even I was finding the game too easy at this point. I know it's not cheating, but there was no real tension in the last few fights, making them underwhelming. We head to the center of the academy, and there is Nimona waiting. And not only Nimona, but every trainer with status also. She leaves with Lycanroc, and I have Hot Dog out. Hot Dog can take out a Lycanroc with a big terrestrialized dig. Gudra is next, and although we take massive damage from a muddy water, two digs from Hot Dogs gets the kill. Now it's Pormont, and this poor thing never stood a chance as another dig destroys it. Do Dunspans is next, and Hot Dog gets it to low health before Mockingbird can come in and take it out. Orthworm comes in, and a couple of flame charges takes it out. Last is Meow Skata, and one last Acrobatics takes it out, getting the kill, and beating Nimona for the last time. And now finally, we can make our way to the true final boss of the game. We meet with Arvin, Penny and Nimona at the entrance of Area Zero, and apparently my Maridon is a four-seater all of a sudden as we all jump on it and fly down to the bottom of Area Zero. As we make our way down closer to the Professor, we come across one last encounter, Volcarona. This thing is an amazing Pokemon, so I catch it and I add it to the team. At the deepest depths of Area Zero, we can access the lab where Professor Turo is waiting for us. Oh look, it's another Maridon. Sheesh. This one really looks down on my one like it's some sort of pathetic excuse of a Pokemon. Even just before it enters the lab, it turns around and looks at us with disgust. I really can't wait to beat that thing up. Huh? What's wrong? 
Are you bummed that your heartwarming family reunion got cut off so quickly? Okay, Namona, remind me never to come over to your place to meet your family if you considered that moment heartwarming. A bunch of future Pokemon escape from the lab, but I have no time for the small fry. Once we're in, we meet with the professor and... Wait, what? You're a robot AI? So it turns out the real professor died in an explosion four years ago, and now he wants us to destroy the time machine he built as Pokemon from the future are slowly taking over. We go to the deepest part of Area Zero, and if this doesn't look like a final boss arena, I don't know what does. Professor Turo warns us that he's programmed to attack us once we attempt to destroy the time machine. Right, so can you like go back up to the lab, put yourself on sleep mode uh, before I do this, or is, is that not an option? Uh, nope, looks like we have to battle. Standing atop his tower, the professor challenges us to the final battle of the game. He leads with Iron Moth, who is a fire poison type, so a single quad effective dig from Hot Dog can obliterate it completely. Iron Thorns is next, and I feel like Turo is throwing, as this is a rock electric type. Yep, another Pokemon that is four times weak to dig. See you later, buddy. Next up is Iron Bundle, a water ice type, and this thing outspeeds and hits me hard with a water pulse. Hot Dog responds with a Thunder Fang, but it only does half damage. I hard switch in Kate Perry, who takes a decent chunk of damage from a Water Pulse. Hoping I've baited an Ice move, Scarlet tags in for Katy Perry, and this bootleg Delibird goes for a Snowscape, throwing the fight. Iron Bundle hits us hard with a Drill Peck, and Scarlet responds with a Quiver Dance, raising my speed, Special Defense, and Special Attack. We outspeed on the next turn, and a Giga Drain takes it out while recovering some HP. Iron Jigalus is next, and this thing is a dark flying type. Expecting a flying move, I terrestrialize to lose my bug typing, and I go for another Quiver Dance. As expected, we do get hit with an Air Slash, but we probably would have survived even if we didn't terrestrialize. Scarlet then sends his Hydreigon back to its grave with a huge fiery dance. Iron Hands, the electric fighting type, is next, and I get a bit greedy going for a Giga Drain to get some health back. But it survives and responds with a Thunder Punch, which luckily doesn't paralyze me. A second Giga Drain gets a kill, and now we have his last Pokemon. Iron Valiant is a fairy fighting, but a big fiery dance from Scarlet is enough to take it out. The dust settles, but there's one more layer of security we need to deal with before we can truly destroy the time machine, and that is the other Maridon. Our Pokeballs don't work, so we get a 1v1 battle between the two Maridons. With the power of plot armor, our Maridon finishes off the other one with a big terrestrialized dragon type Terra Blast, getting its revenge, and also saving the day. And with that, we have beaten a fire type only Nuzlocke of Pokemon Violet. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.